G'day, welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today we're looking at some FPV equipment, but not this. This is a DJI Air Unit. Everyone's going digital. Well, almost everybody. I think there's a few of us out there who still fly analog. Well, I'm a little bit unusual. I fly everything. I've got HD Zero. I've got DJI Digital. I've got the new Walk Snail system. Big review on that coming up shortly. A bit of an eye opener there. Um, so don't miss that review. If not subscribed, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And of course, there's still analog. Remember good old analog? Well, Today I'm going to be looking at this. It's the Foxtech Reaper VTX Extreme. And this is what I would consider to be, as, as of the moment, the best analog video transmitter I have ever used. Now, there were some other analog transmitters that came pretty close years ago. There was this one. This was the, I love this video transmitter. This was the Elite. I think it's Turnergy, a Quantum Elite. These little things really, really outperformed their specs. Fantastic, but only 200 milliwatts. And I don't even know if you can buy them now, but that's really great. This one I've had to repair a couple of times. The, the regulator in them is not that good. Sometimes they blow up. Anyway, let's talk about this thing. So here it is. This is what I would say state of the art when it comes to analog video transmitters. So don't dismiss analog. As I say, I fly them all and I probably spend an equal amount of time going backwards and forwards between analog and DJI. And now the walk snail system, as I say, you'll find out what I'm going to be doing with that. Uh, but analog is easily half, over half of the flying I do is with analog. And this is my new go-to. And I'll tell you why. Let's have a look. This is the box that comes in. We don't unbox things, but we will take it out of the box. Look at that pretty color. Isn't that lovely? First giveaway is it's got a metal heat sink. This is metal. Let me hit it with something. It's metal, real metal, not plastic, and that's quite important because this thing will do up to two and a half watts of RF output. That's a lot. Of course, I would only ever run it at 25 milliwatts because in most places around the world, unless you have a ham license or some other special privilege, you're going to be limited to 25 milliwatts. So you might think, why would I buy a two and a half watt video transmitter if, I need, if I'm only going to be able to use one hundredth of that power? What is the point? Well. I guess it's no surprise that most people will use more than 25 milliwatts. Not everyone will want to use 2.5 watts unless you're doing really long distance um, or you need extreme penetration. But I would say a happy medium um, is 1.5 watts. It'll do 1.5 watts. And it's a good idea if you're using something like this, don't run it to the extreme. Run it part way. It'll last longer. It's less stressed. It won't get so hot. And your results will be almost every bit as good. Remember, when you are flying FPV, to get twice the range, You've got to use four times the power. So um, going from 1.5 watts to 2.5 watts, you're only going to be getting about 30% more range. It's not a lot. So why use all that extra power, generate all that extra heat, and potentially reduce the life of the product? I would say if you if you legally can do so, run this at one and a half watts. It will be just fine. Now in the videos that I'm going to show you of me flying with this transmitter, um, of course I only flew at 25 milliwatts, but you could assume that this is what it would look like, wink wink, if you were flying at one and a half watts. Okay. But anyway, let's take a bit of a look inside and see what you get. You get the thing. It's actually quite light. I must put it on the scales that don't show the blood. And there we go. It's um, it's a it's not very big. Let's compare it to the, the DJI unit for comparison. It's quite a bit smaller, especially in height. If we look at the, the height of these two things, one of the benefits of analog, it can be really small and really light. Look at that. That's just a tiny fraction of the size of the DJI Air unit. Of course, the Vista is smaller, but Vistas are much thicker than this. So if you're looking for lightweight, you won't get two and a half watts of digital in a package that small. And trust me, the state of the art with analog it's actually pretty damn good. I, I shocked myself. I went to Fox here and said, look, give me your best camera, give me one of these, and I'll see how well it works. Well, let's look at the best we can do with analog video. And I've got to say, even I, a regular analog video flyer, was surprised at how good analog has got, how good it is. You know, it's not as good as digital in terms of the image sharpness and resolution, but in almost every other respect, it's pretty damn good these days. So. That's it. Now um, you can go, I'll put a link in the description to the product page, which has all the specs. It's not an affiliate link. I don't make any money if you want to buy one of these. I'm not here to shill a product. I give you my honest opinion and I, I try to give you the facts as I see them. So I'm not here trying to picture this thing. If this was crap, I would tell you, but I really kind of like it. I'm going to be using this probably in all my significant builds. Remember, analog, one of the benefits of analog is that you can buy like a $15 or $20 all-in-one camera and video transmitter and put it on your cheapest, lightest airplane. And so it can be very, very cheap. That's why analog still has a place. Tiny whoops and little, you know, foamies. Analog 
there's really no alternative in terms of cost and performance. But that's it. Now you also get some cables and things. What good would it be if you didn't have a cable? Here we go, look at that. That's it, that's your cable. Um, and the cable connects, uh, there's a little there's a uh, little MMX, I think MMX, yeah, I can't remember the name of the connector, anyway, um, look on the spec sheet. And then this little uh, connector goes in there and this goes off to your camera. I mean, well, it ain't very hard, is it? There's a couple of extra wires, one for voltage sense, and then you've got your plus and minus as well for powering the whole damn thing. I think it runs from 2S up to 6S quite happily. Um, it's more than you'll ever need. And so I stuck it in my mini race wing, which had previously been using this video transmitter, replaced it with that. In fact, let's get the scales that don't show the blood. I want to know which of these two is lighter. So here we are set to grams. The old one there, it weighs 13 grams. That's the, the Quantum Elite, the one I've, I've really liked. And the new one weighs 12 grams, so it's, it's or 13 grams, it's the same weight. It's the same weight as that, but you've got so much more power. You've got easily 10, over 10 times the power in that little unit there. Of course you will need an antenna for these things as well. So I said to Fox here, give me your best antenna. And that's one of these lollipop things here. And I got the long one because it, I like to have my antennas a long way away from the rest of the airframe. It means you get much more consistent results and turns and so forth. So even if you throw an antenna on there, you're looking at 16, 18 grams. And the camera, I don't, I only got one camera, so I can't weigh that, but it's, it's still only a few grams, still only a few grams. If we compare that to, your DJI Air unit, what's that going to weigh all up? Whoa, look at the difference. This is why analog is so suitable for small old lightweight aircraft. And so, yeah, um, I have put that in the mini race wing. Let's have a little bit of a look at that, see how I installed it. It was really a bodge installation, but it shows you how simple these things can really be. So here we go. Hopefully it'll all focus. There is the video transmitter in here. Whoops. My bench needs a real big tidy up, doesn't it? There it is. I just cable tied it to the bottom of this frame, which is a carbon frame for the the mini race wing. And there's the T-Rex camera, just the little T-Rex camera, which I'm also, you'll be seeing in this video. That's, you know, probably one of the best FPV analog cameras on the market at the moment. You'll see how good it looks in the video. Um, and that's it, it really wasn't hard. And then just ran the wires off to my battery. The this is a four, four cell pack and yeah, no, no flight controller, no OSD, uh, apart from the one built into the camera, which I haven't set up yet. So this is just everything out of the box. I did set this to, 25 milliwatts, wink, wink, uh, which will appear to operate as if it was 1.5 watts, uh, but that's all I did. And uh, operation of this thing is, is actually quite simple. Now, if you don't have this wired up to smart audio or is it uh, the TBS system, there's just one button here. See, one little button, and then we've got some lights which show things such as the, uh, the channel and the, uh, the band and the power. So you just use that button, cycle through, set them up yourself manually. I just set it up manually. I, as I say, no flight controller, so no smart audio um, carry-ons. And there's that connector, the antenna connector, which if we look at one of the antennas, you'll see it's one of those. Come on, focus camera, there we go. Just like the DJI digital system. That clips in there quite nicely. I don't know that I'm a fan of these connectors, but it's certainly better than the micro or UFL, uh, the UFLs are terrible. These at least have a little bit of mechanical um, strength to them. They're not gonna rip out in a big hurry. There you go. And they do say with this, of course, you need to use a good quality antenna. That stands to reason, because if you've got two and a half watts of radio frequency energy coming out that little hole, if your antenna isn't up to scratch, then it will that antenna will reflect back some of the power into the video transmitter. And so if you're getting, you know, maybe a watt and a half or two watts of power going back into the video transmitter, it's gonna heat up real quick and it will melt. It will melt the RF output stage and it will kill it. So again, another good reason why you probably don't wanna run full power if you don't have to, because if you do have a SWR mismatch in your antenna, let's say your aircraft or your drone lands upside down, the antennas in the long grass, that can cause a lot of reflected power to go back into the video transmitter. If you're running at full power, then all that power is gonna go straight back where it came from heat up the video transmitter and it could cause premature failure. So by running at a lower power level, you protect yourself from that. And let's be honest, as I say, you're only gonna get a 30% increase in range with going from 1.5 to 2.5 watts. Maybe not even that much, maybe only 25% increase in range. It's not a lot. So yeah, run it at a bit lower, 25 milliwatts. You know, that's what they say from the, uh, the regulators say 25 milliwatts, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you the footage which I've got over several weekends of this setup, this, this VTX and the Foxia T-Rex camera in operation on my mini race wing. Now the mini race wing is not the smoothest of craft. It bounces around a hell of a lot. So don't expect anything fantastic out of this, but I don't want you to look at the, the shakiness of the, of the flight or anything other than the, the image and the, the, the solidity of the RF. I'll narrate you as we go 
through this flight. Okay, here we go. And if you've been watching my XJet channel, you'll have seen some of this footage in recent weeks. This is uh, the last flight I've had with this system. I've flown it for, as I said, several weeks and had very, very good results all round. Now, you notice uh, the image in the background. That is actually from a Runcam 2 4K onboard HD recording camera, 4K recording camera. And, and the square in the middle is actually what I'm getting in my Skyzone O4X goggles. I've recorded on the DVR. Now you see the image quality is pretty outstanding for analog. I, I'm, I was really excited and blown away when I saw this. It's much better than any of my other analog systems. And uh, as we head out here past the, the dirt bike track, we're already at uh, coming up to a kilometre from where I'm standing. And the image is just rock solid, absolutely rock solid, which is more than I can say for the flight of the wing. Pretty bumpy day this day, unfortunately. And, and we go further out. I think my maximum point is about 1.8 or 2 kilometres in this direction. And you see there's not a sign of any snow or weak signal showing up in the image. It's just perfect this is what analog's all about note also note also that i'm not particularly high i'm well under 400 feet i wanted to keep low because you'll see a lot of videos people flying long range fpv and they fly pretty high because it's just one of the the rules of physics that the higher you fly the stronger your signal will be and also flying low like this really tests out a system because you notice some flickering there well that's a combination of flying through the fresnel zone and also getting some multi-pathing, some reflections off the hangers that are behind me. And analog, it's one of analog's weak points, is that you will always get this multi-pathing, some of this flickering, caused by the, the, the sort of um, interaction of the reflected signals and the direct signal from the video transmitter. Uh, the fact that these these flickering is so minimal in this environment is really good. Some of my systems suffer quite badly from multipathing here. So the little Foxia lollipop antenna is working extremely well. And the whole setup is, is really rather nice. You notice at uh, time to time there's, there's a reasonable amount of flickering, but it's certainly flyable all the way along here. So I'm flying at the moment, I'm probably seven, 800 meters from where I'm standing again. And I continue to fly along this row of trees to about, again, two kilometers from where I'm standing. You notice as I get down here, because I'm using a directional antenna on my goggles, the signal strength does drop a little. It gets a little bit snowy here. And that's because I'm, I'm pointing my head in the wrong direction. Um, one thing with having antennas on your goggles is you've got to remember to keep pointing your head in, in the correct direction. And as I turn here, I think I reorient my head so that the, the signal improves. But when I go into the turn, there's an ev even more of a loss of signal because the null point of the transmitter antenna starts pointing at me. So you'll see very shortly, when I get out to just over two kilometers here, I think it is. Here we go. Starting the turn. You notice it gets a bit grainy there. and But I soon realize my head's in the wrong direction. And I turn my head around and there we go. Right back to a brilliant image. And if we continue turning, you see the airfield is a long way away. And again, I remain quite low because I, there's no point in flying high. First of all, you don't want to fly high because that's where real aeroplanes are. And secondly, I, will, I wanted to test the performance of the system in a relatively low altitude uh, proximity type flying. And comes out with flying colours, so to speak. As I come back here over this little road, I will drop down lower again because, as I said, I don't want to be high for all those reasons. And the system still works really well. We get a bit more flickering because we're going to come up on the hangers soon. In fact, as we come past the hangers, you'll see it, the multi pathing is at its worst, but it is still eminently flyable. Now, with digital, you don't notice multi pathing because the, the, any bad packets are rejected. All you'll get is in a really bad situation, perhaps a little flick up in latency, a little change in latency. But, of course... The beauty of analog is that the latency doesn't change. And same with HD0, you have fixed latency and it makes it so much more fun when you're flying very fast, close proximity. There I am on the left. Hmm. And so now multi parting gets pretty bad because as you can see, I'm close to these hangers, lots of reflections, lots of um, signal being bounced off the hanger and interfering with the direct transmission from the video transmitter. Remember, this is all 25 milliwatts, wink, wink, but this is what it would look like if you were flying one and a half watts. And this is the really bad multi parting because you can see those hangers there. They're just like a giant wall of reflectors. So this is a harsh environment for analog FPV, and this is a really good test of how the system performs. So what I'm going to do now, I'll leave you with a bit more of the video to watch. There's not much. And stick around because I have my closing thoughts after I land, which is only a minute or so away.
So there you go, that's the combo you saw in action. And as I say, it is a definitely recommended. If you can afford it, if you, if you want something that's top notch analog, then this is a pretty good thing. I've used it as say now for over a month and I've had no problems whatsoever. Absolutely rock solid, really, really good. Um, I will be doing some more videos actually, I think on analog because analog is still not past its best by date. It's still quite good, it still works. And uh, so I might put everything into comparison, everything into, into contrast by putting the best analog against the various digital systems. And we'll just have a look because there is so much choice in the market right now. People need a bit of a hand and uh, do you get rid of your analog system if you're looking at going digital? Do you hang on to it? What do you do? Well, those are things we'll cover in future videos. So if you want to make sure you see that, don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. In the meantime, I'd like you all to thank the people who support me on Patreon because they make it possible for me to make these videos and spend, I guess I've done probably at least a couple of hours flying to get this video, the flight videos, and a bit of time fiddling around the bench here. And if you want to see a teardown, a teardown of this video transmitter, uh, there'll be a link in the description to Ian from Mads Tech, Mads RC. He's done a teardown, so go and have a look. As I say, with all reviews, I always say this in my reviews, don't rely solely on one reviewer. Everybody has a different take on things. So if you're thinking of buying a product such as these, have a look at all the reviews you can find and then try and see what the middle ground is because uh, somewhere the truth lies in between. I'm a great fan of this. Someone else may have found a, product, a problem that I didn't find. So go and have a look. Look around and when you, if you want to buy one of these, um, don't use the link in my description because it's not an affiliate link. Go and find your favourite other reviewer and use the link, their affiliate link, so put a bit of coin in their pocket. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.